Hey there, today we're taking a look at the Ryzen 5 5600H and the Ryzen 5 6600H running Monster Hunter Rise. We're comparing the performance between the two right now. You can see we're running on the exact same drivers at the average settings. Now, the performance difference between the two at just the average settings is pretty drastic. We're looking at pretty much two completely different worlds in terms of performance, where the 5600H can't even give us a 60 FPS gaming experience, though it is very consistent in its performance, the 6600H is giving us an above 60 FPS gaming experience with 1% lows that are just a couple of frames under that 60 FPS target, which means we are getting a absolutely perfect experience without having to make any compromises in terms of resolution or really having to drop down any settings. Overall, it is rock solid. And I mean, in terms of averages, we're looking at a 48% FPS increase and our 1% lows are at a 41% increase. These are some pretty astronomical numbers going on here where we're just in two completely different leagues in terms of performance. And it's really impressive to see, especially considering the fact that this is just the 660M. This is pretty much half the amount of cores that the higher end 680M is using. So there is still more performance to be squeezed out of RDNA 2 here. But of course, the 5600H isn't exactly giving us a 60 FPS gaming experience here, but it's still more than playable enough on here but we can try to adjust the graphics settings to see if we can't boost the performance on both of these so let's see what happens when we actually end up dropping the settings down to their absolute lowest now at the lowest in-game graphics settings the level of performance difference between the two drastically drops where they're far more comparable between the two it makes sense when you really think about it because of the fact that what is happening with the lowest in-game graphics settings is that we are dropping the resolution down we are running at 70 percent of 10 80p so that is a pretty noticeable drop and by dropping the resolution we're already removing a lot of the load that is happening onto the gpu and it's going on to the cpu and the cpu difference between the 5600h and the 6600h is very very minor they are pretty much the exact same architecture they are practically the same cpu the only real difference being that the 6600h can clock a little bit higher and so what this ends up doing is it just leads to a fps average difference of just 12% and our 1% lows only see a 9% increase, which at this point is pretty clear that that is a significant difference between what we saw with the average settings where the differences were in the 40 range. This time around, we're in terms of 1% low, only seeing single digit increases. So not very drastic, but realistically speaking, neither one is providing a bad experience here and you're going to be able to have a good time playing like this. But with the 6600H so far, we've seen that you don't need to drop the resolution like this. The level of performance that we were getting on the 5600H might actually warrant dropping the resolution so you can actually get a high refresh rate gaming experience, but the 6600H was performing more than adequately enough that you realistically wouldn't even want to consider dropping the resolution. That being said, the way that I would normally play this on these types of chips is using my own settings where what I do is I run everything at the lowest, but I adjust the resolution to be 100% resolution and I increase the textures to their maximum as well as the texture filtering so let's see how both of these perform in those ideal settings for me and now what ends up happening with these settings that i would personally end up running we get a pretty noticeable difference in terms of performance where the 5600h is still not able to give us a rock solid 60 fps gaming experience and the one percent lows do fall noticeably below that though not to a range that i would consider to be unplayable at all the 6600h just performs so much better in this scenario where again we are seeing a 40 plus percent increase in terms of fps average where it actually ends up being a 47 percent increase while the one percent lows see a slightly more modest 36 percent increase in terms of one percent low number now by comparison that might not seem as good but that is still a 36 percent increase in terms of fps in the one percent lows which are realistically the most important numbers that you want to see increase doesn't really matter if you get an extra 30 FPS to your average if your 1% lows only increase by 2 FPS. At the end of the day, the level of performance that you're going to get is not going to feel that much better because the fluctuation that's going to end up happening. What this shows is that there is a nice increase in both 1% lows and averages, which means that in both situations, this ends up being a very playable experience, though the 6600H is giving you a higher FPS gaming experience, and it just feels noticeable 
nicer to play, specifically because the 1% lows are hitting above 60 FPS. So in general, it really goes to show that RDNA 2 is a monumental leap in terms of performance. But it isn't a catch all increase where you saw the difference at the lowest in game graphics settings where we actually end up dropping the resolution down. It pretty much wiped away practically all the gains that we would see. But realistically, you can't really even chalk this up as a bad thing, considering the fact that all this really means is that both are giving a high FPS gaming experience and they're practically going to be indistinguishable from each other. But with the settings that I would consider to be the most ideal and what most people would probably want to target there is a noticeable difference so if you're considering a system with either one of these chips i would really really consider just going with something with the 6600h or its 7000 series rebadge now both of these were tested of course with the b-link ser5 and ser6 mini pc so if you're interested in picking up one of those you can check out the amazon affiliate links down below personally at the price points that the 6600h version are starting to hit it really does make a lot of sense to to start considering that because the longevity and the level of performance that you're going to be getting out of it is going to be pretty noticeable. But I hope you found this video comparison interesting. If you did, be sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next one.